Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in this episode of the scrap wood shed build I'm going to be showing you how I fitted the cladding. So now that I had all of the walls framed I started off by adding a vapour barrier. So for this I'm just using anything that I had lying around. These are some old sand sacks which are like tarpaulins ideal as a vapour barrier it's just to prevent wind, insects, dust getting in and moisture. I used a stapler to attach them. And then I cut off any excess around the edge. So now for the two side panels and the back panel, I'll be using pallet boards. Uh, most of it you won't see, you'll only be able to see one side. This is just to save on wood. Um, I'm just using whatever I can get my hands on here. So I started off by cladding this side panel with pallet boards. Once I'd offered up a board, I could mark it and then cut it on the mitre saw. And to attach them, I'll be using these brad nails. And this was just to hold the boards into position. Later on, I'm going to reinforce them with some screws. In hindsight, it's probably not the best idea to use a nail gun like this for attaching pallet boards. Um, I thought that it would save me time, but I think in the end it probably cost me time. I should have just gone straight in with the screws. But anyway, it did help to hold the boards in place before I could get some screws in. So I'm just attaching the boards here to all of the uprights. And then staggering the boards when needed. Of course, pallet wood is not ideal for cladding a shed. I do have some feather edge board which I'm going to be using for the front of the shed but I didn't have enough so pallet boards will have to do for this project. I am trying to make this shed out of just scrap materials and do it for almost no money at all. So for the slope here at the top of the panel I can offer up a board and then draw a line and cut out that shape using the circular saw. So these brad nails would never hold these in position permanently. The heads are only small and that is why I needed to reinforce them later on with more screws. But you can see they're doing a good job of keeping everything together in the meantime. So that was one panel done. Then I could just staple from the inside any loose bits of these black tarpaulins. So there were some small gaps in between the pallet boards so we decided to fill some of the more obvious gaps with some sealant and then give uh, a few coats of fence stain to the panels. Here's a second coat going on. As, as I say, I, I used whatever I could. Here's an old windbreak, and it's very similar to a tarpaulin, so I'm attaching this to the back panel, again, just to act as a vapor barrier. And for the back panel, I repeated the same process. If you wanted to, you could use these pallet boards in the same way as feather edge boards. You could overlap them and give them an overhang, but that would take a lot more wood. 
and because this back panel will be protected by a fence and the one side panel will be protected by uh, another shed it doesn't really matter too much so you can see here now I'm reinforcing all of these pallet boards with screws so that they don't lift off the frame And that was the back panel finished. And again, this got a coat of paint and we filled in the cracks with some sealant. So now for attaching the frames to the base, I've got some ceramic decking screws and I'm just gonna pre-drill pre these into the frame. It makes it easier to, uh, to get the frame in. And you'll see that now. So I can just put these in ready and these will be drilled directly down into the base and this way I can offer up the frame line it all up get it where I want it and then I can just drive these screws down through the pallet boards into the the base frame And now we can get the back panel on. And repeat the process, quite satisfying to get these panels on, just driving the screws down into the base. And um, it starts to feel like a structure very quickly. Now I've got some self-tapping screws and I'm gonna attach each wall to the next one by screwing them together. I've got a small clamp there, just clamping them in position while I get the screws in. And now for the other side, as you can see those two panels will never be seen anyway. And again, we could keep coating it with stain because this bare wood takes a lot of stain. So need to keep coating it up. And you can see there I've added a window. That will be in the next video on how I added the windows and the door and the air vent. So stay tuned for that one. And now I'm just continuing to um, add pallet wood around that window. And again, for the slope at the top, I cut out the shape on the circular saw. And attached it with some screws. At this point, the structure is quite wobbly because it needs to all get locked together when all the panels go on on the roof and you'll see that later on. And again, I'm using some sealant. Here I've got some frame sealant. And because the vapor barrier is behind these boards, that will really help with wind and insects getting through any of the cracks. So now for the front panel, this one I can get it clad while it's attached to the shed. And again, I've just got it all positioned nicely and drove those screws straight down into the base. And again, I used a clamp just to get everything nice and secure. And then I could drive screws in to lock everything in place.
and then I could just add the wrap to the front panel. Again, I'm just using what I have, an old tarpaulin and some old plastic. So now for cladding the front, my dad had this really old feather edge board and he pre-painted it so that we don't have to give it as many coats later on. Really old board, um, but it's seasoned wood, so it, it should be fine. Uh, this is a new piece of wood that I had left over from um, when I built a garden gate last year. So I just wanted to use this fresh piece because it's quite long and I wanted to use that um, as a starting point at the bottom. Just line it up with the bottom so it looks level by eye and then we can start to level the feather edge after this. So once this board has gone on and I'm just screwing this directly onto the base here. We could start off with the feather edge board, marking up the length needed and cutting that on the mitre saw. Even though these boards are very old, they're very dry and seasoned, so they should last many years. So the trick here is to get the first piece on, offer up the spirit level, And once this first piece is level, the rest will follow and you won't have to use the spirit level anymore. So I made this little jig and I've measured the full width of a board. I've added two centimeters for the overlap. So then I've cut a piece of wood two centimeters shorter than the thickness of the board. And that way I can use this little jig here to get it all nicely lined up across and give two centimeters of overhang. You can increase the overhang if you want, but I went with two centimeters. And then I could add screws, and I'm adding the screws into the uprights of the frame. Once the first one is on, as I say, it's very easy to just continue this process using this jig. I piloted all the holes just to prevent any splitting. quite satisfying to add this feather edge board once you get going um, the process is quite quick and the benefit of using screws is that if you ever need to replace a piece later on you can always unscrew it if you nail it it's not so easy to replace and nails tend to split the wood more as well because you can't control the force going in as much as you can with a screw. So luckily we just about had enough wood here to finish the front of the shed and that's the shed that uh, the, the part that's going to be seen the most at the front. So I think it will look nice with this feather edge board. Gives the shed a bit of character. So once I got to the window I had to cut some smaller pieces to work around the window. And I could continue using that jig. and then carry on past the window up to the top. And on the other side, I repeated that process. I got that first piece level. And then continued up using that jig. Now for the top piece around the door, I've got another new piece that I'm going to add because it's longer and I'm just using the jigsaw to cut out an area where the door is. And that was the last bit of feverage board to add. So 
So because these boards were quite old and they've been used, my dad decided to fill any of the old screw and nail holes. So now onto the corner trims. Again, I've got some scrap wood here and I'm cutting it down in a dimension so that it covers the end grain of both sides. So of the feather edge end grain and the pallet board end grain and I'm just chamfering an edge on here with the router and that will make it easier for me to drill a pilot hole and add a screw. I could get that piece offered up and then screw it in and the screw goes onto that flat chamfered part as you can see there and you can see both the end grains are completely covered and it just makes the shed look more finished. Then I could add a final bit of trim under the window. And a piece of trim underneath the door. Then my dad and myself gave the shed a final coat of stain, just going around all the edges. And that was all the cladding complete. Okay, so that is about it for this video. So that's how I fitted the uh, feather edge board and pallet wood cladding onto the shed. I really like how the feather edge board has turned out. It's really old, but it looks pretty good now that it's had a fresh coat of paint. So in the next video, I'll be showing how I fitted the door, the window and the air vent. So please stay tuned for that one. If you like the video, please remember to like and also consider subscribing for more DIY related videos. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.